So until this point, we've only dealt with relatively small programs or procedures. And now I'm going to go through a much more detailed and non-trivial example. So it's it's the C code that I'm showing you on this on this slide. And it ultimately gets translated into about 35 lines of assembly code. So we'll go through this bit by bit over a number of slides. Let's first examine the C code and make sure we understand what this is doing. So this itself is a procedure invoked by perhaps a much larger program. And so that larger program has an array of integers that it wants to sort. So it invokes this procedure sort. It provides a pointer to that array of integers and says that I just want the first n values in that array to be sorted. Okay, and I'm going to use a bubble sort algorithm that I'm showing you over here. So I declare variables i and j and then I have a nested for loop where I iterate for from i equals 0 to n minus 1 and then I iterate over j as well and what I'm doing in this iteration over here is looking at the next unexamined value seeing if it's a small value and if it is a small value I try to move it as far to the left as possible so essentially you have this array of integers over here let's say that i is currently pointing over here so what you're doing is looking at this next element over here and if it's smaller than the preceding element over here then you swap these two then you look to see if this is smaller than the element on the left if it is smaller then you again need to do a swap and you keep swapping until this next value over here has found a location in this sorted list okay so this is referred to as bubble sort and what this procedure is doing is it invokes a short procedure of its own which is used to swap two elements okay so it provides a pointer into this array and then it also says that the jth element needs to be swapped with the j plus oneth element right so it invokes procedure swap giving a pointer to that array of integers and it says that the kth element needs to be swapped with k plus one so this procedure itself is fairly simple we all know how to do a classic swap you bring vk into a temp value then you place vk equals vk plus one and then vk plus one assumes the value of that temp location okay so this is how the c program operates now let's see how this gets converted into assembly code and as i said i'm going to do it piece by piece let's first focus on the swap procedure and see what that becomes now this is going to be fairly simple so i, s I start out by defining the label swap i now need to compute so i've, I've been given a pointer to the array of integers so i know that v0 is the start of that array and that has been provided as one of the arguments for this procedure right so this value can already be found in the argument register a0 then i'm being told that the kth element needs to be swapped with the k plus one element and the value of k has been provided as the second input argument so that's sitting in register a1 all right so now i obviously need to first find the value of vk okay so how do i get the address of vk right so the address of vk is address of v0 plus because these are integers it's going to be four times k right so we've seen similar we've seen similar examples before where we had to access the kth element of an array to compute this i take a0 my first argument register which contains the address of v0 and then i'm going to add four times k which is register a1 all right so this is what is happening here i'm taking a1 shifting it to the left by two and that's the same as multiplying a1 by four then i'm taking the temporary result t1 adding it to a0 over here and putting it into t1 right so essentially t1 now contains the address of array element vk so i bring that element into t0 now i need to get the value of array element vk plus one so that's just you know four added to the address of vk and so that's brought into t2 and now i need to swap these two elements and place them back in memory so the way i I, I do the swap is the value that I fetch from this address now gets placed in this address right so the value in t2 which is the value of vk plus 1 is now being placed into the address of vk and likewise the value that I got from vk is being placed into the address of vk plus 1 so these two stores are the same as these two loads except that the register values and the addresses are being kind of crisscrossed so now that I've done the swap, I have to return, and that's with the usual jump 
So now that we've seen procedure swap, let's now look at the initial sort procedure, which was made up of those two nested for loops. So let's start by looking at the outer for loop. Now recall that this sort procedure itself was being called with arguments v0 and n, right? So we know that a0 has the address of v0 and a1 has the value of n. In addition to that, I'm, I'm declaring two variables i and j, which are going to be placed in registers s0 and s1. But now let's focus on this outer for loop. I'm going to start by initializing i, which is, you know, s, which is in register s0, to 0. And the easiest way to do that is, is with an instruction like this, right? So add immediate, or even just a simple add instruction, where I'm placing something into s0, and I'm adding dollar zero, dollar zero. Okay, and in this case, I'm going to do it with a pseudo instruction called move. So as a, as a programmer, it's much easier for me to just say, you know, move the value zero into register S zero. There is no such MIPS instruction. So that this instruction would become something that looks like this, you know, add dollar zero, dollar zero, place it into dollar S, S zero. Then I start my loop body. I'm going to first do this check over here, which says, make sure that i is less than n. Okay, so n is in a1. So I do a comparison of s0 and a1. And if s0 is greater than or equal to the value in n, then it's time to exit, right? So then I jump down over here. Note that again, that this instruction does not exist in the MIPS architecture. You would most likely do a set on less than instruction, followed by a beq or a bne instruction. So in this case, with, this, with the use of the pseudo instruction, I check the condition and decide to exit if it's time to exit. If not, then I get into this inner loop over here, right? So the body of that inner loop will be spelled out in the next few slides. Once that inner loop is done, I need to increment the value of i before I move on to the next loop iteration. So I add one to S0 and then jump back up over here. Okay, so implementing this, this outer for loop was fairly straightforward. Now let's look at the inner loop. So the inner loop starts by initializing j. So we are set, setting j equals i minus one. i is in s0, j is in s1. So I take s0, subtract minus one, put it into s1. So now I have the value of j initialized. Now I need to check these conditions over here. I first check to see if j is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so if j less than zero, then it is time to exit, right? And so then I would jump down to this exit location over here. But if j is not less than zero, then I'm going to continue on. And what I need to do is check to see if vj is greater than vj plus one. Before, before I do that, I need to first compute the address for vj. Since I know that j is an s1, right? So address of vj is address of v0 plus four times j address of v0 we know is in a0, j is in s1. Okay, so I do four times s1 by shifting s1 to the left by two. That result is placed in t1, t1 gets added to a0 and you place that in t2. So t2 now has the address of vj. So I bring the value of vj into t3, value of vj plus one, which is just uh, four added to that address into register T4. Then I compare T3 and T4, and if the exit condition is met, then I jump to exit two. If not, then it's time to get into this inner loop and execute the swap function. So I'll explain that on the next slide. So this is the body of the inner loop down here. Once that is done, I need to go back and continue my inner loop. I have to first decrement J by one. So this is where that decrement happens. And then I jump back to the start of this inner loop. Okay, now let's expand on what is happening in this inner loop. But before I do that, let me just first talk about a few performance optimizations. Right now, this inner loop requires me to do a swap. So every time I invoke that swap function, I'm going to put new values into A0 and A1. Okay, and normally when I invoke a procedure, I'm supposed to save the old values of A0 and A1 onto the stack and then put in new values into A0, A1 and then call the next procedure. Right, so if I was saving things on the stack inside this inner for loop, then I would uh, then I would have to repeatedly save the values of A0 and A1 
on every single inner loop iteration. And similarly, every time I call function swap, I have to save the value of the return address register $RA. I'm going to call procedure swap repeatedly with new register values A0 and A1. Right? So instead of saving these every time on the stack, I'm going to start my sort procedure by just copying A0 and A1 into registers S2 and S3. And I'm going to use S2 and S3 for A0 and A1 from that point on. Okay, So this code that I wrote over here that was using register A0 would actually now be using $S2. So I would have to kind of rewrite this code to use um, S2 and S3 instead of A0 and A1. Then in addition to that, I said that you know dollar $RA has to be copied repeatedly every time I invoke the procedure swap. So instead, I'll just copy, I'll just save the value of RA as soon as I enter procedure sort. So this is how the procedure sort begins, right? It's going to save a bunch of stuff onto the stack. It starts by saving the return address onto the stack. And then it's using registers S0, S1, S2, and S3. Now, these are registers that might also be in use within the procedure that called the sort procedure, right? So before I override those values, I have to save the current contents of registers S0, S1, S2, and S3 onto the stack, right? So that's what I'm saving over here. And then I copy my input arguments A0 and A1 into registers S2 and S3, right? And so from that point on, I'm just going to be using S2 and S3. Then I do all the other code that I showed you for procedure sort, right? The outer body of the loop. And then I'm going to get into the inner loop body, you know, which I had shown with these dot, dot, dots over here, right? So this inner loop body is now being shown over here. What it has to do is it has to place the right arguments into registers A0 and A1 before it calls procedure swap. Okay, so S2 has the value of, of address of V0. So that gets placed into A0. And S1 has the current value of J, which gets placed into register A1. And now I invoke procedure swap. Okay, so you'll see that you know every time I invoke procedure swap, I don't have to save the values of A0 and A1 onto the stack because A0 and A1 are now in registers S2 and S3. That is, they are not going to get overwritten by my invocation of procedure swap. Okay, and also I don't have to save the value of RA because I did it once at the very start of procedure sort. So, you know, this example is also exposing you to all kinds of other phenomena, such as, you know, performance optimizations where you do something at the start of the program and don't do it repeatedly every time you call some procedure. All right. So then the, the rest of the code is exactly like I showed you before. And at, at exit one, which is when it's time for procedure sort to return, I have to repeat all of these steps again in the opposite direction, right? So that's a bunch of loads over here. I forgot to mention that I have to move the stack pointer by 20 to accommodate these these five integer values. And then similarly over here, I, I bring the stack pointer back to its original value. And then I return from this sort procedure. So over a bunch of slides, we looked at all the pieces required to implement these nine lines of C code. It results in about 35 lines of assembly. It's hard to fit all 35 lines in one slide, which is why I broke it up into these many slides and introduced each concept incrementally.